Hello, grade 12 psychology class. Welcome to the very first lesson of the entire course, uh, and obviously of unit one. You can see the chapter title here, and the beginning of each chapter has a different color for a background, and um, you know, it'll have chapter two in a different title up here. Uh, also below me at the bottom, you will see that we have a title and a lesson title. Those will change as the units and lessons change. Uh, down there so just make sure that you're always uh, checking into psychology lessons uh, you'll know that by the background uh, and you will also see uh, psychology above me so some other ones may be similar colors from different classes uh, so make sure you're always attending these ones uh, so 12 psychology is above me with the name and the school logo that will be a theme throughout and one last important thing about the screen that you're looking at right now uh, are the key points. And those will change uh, as the lessons change as well. So today's key points you can see above me are describe, explain, predict, and influence. We will talk about each of those later in the lesson. Uh, but keep an eye on those. Just maybe highlight those points when we get to them. Uh, put a star at by that stuff because that is important. Um, you might be wondering how this is all going to work, but maybe I've explained this to you in person, but it's good to get this in a video as well. Uh, you will watch these videos and take notes and then complete the lessons and assignments and journals that we have in the course and in your booklet. Uh, some individuals uh, in the past have um, treated the videos as 100% of the course and it's probably about 33% of it. Like it is only one third of what you actually need to do if you watch the lesson and take down the notes. Uh, there are the assignments to hand in. There's the research that you need to do uh, to collect information. Uh, there are the quizzes and the tests and the journals that are all required. So um, we all kind of set out a timeline together. But uh, you know, as you work through the booklet, you can move on to each next video. Um, kind of whenever it works for you. You might be doing homework uh, and be able to do it then or in class. Um, you know, whenever is best. You can watch the video on the bus if, if that works for you. So without f me rambling on anymore, let's just jump into the first lesson and get going. So the first lesson is the field of psychology and it is an introduction essentially to like what psychology is and what it tries to do. And uh, what it tries to do essentially is the four things above me. Describe, explain, predict, and influence. So we're gonna have a few terms and then let's get into it. So what is psychology? Psychology is the scientific study of behavior and mental processes that is tested through scientific research. And I think it's important that we note that uh, it is through scientific research. So there are a hypothesis and an experiment done with a procedure and the results are recorded systematically. Uh, psychology is a science. Uh, this can help you understand your behaviors, uh, your thoughts, and your emotions. So psychology is, it really actually teaches you a lot about yourself if you kind of apply it to yourself. Uh, a lot about your own behaviors, your own thoughts, and your own emotions and sometimes you can apply that to other people. So. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing that too much. Uh, <laughs> so psychology covers, like the field of psychology covers everything that people think, that they feel, and that they do. And some people think that there's limits on what psychology should cover, uh, but you know, there's many different fields uh, that study many different, um, different experiments. So I flip now to a second slide and you can probably see that like the last one is gone. If you didn't copy all that down, which you probably didn't, I would go back or pause and write that down. You can do it at the beginning of a slide. Uh, so pause, write it all down and then, and then listen to me talk about it. You can listen to me talk about it and then write things down, but it's important that you do both. Uh, sometimes people only listen, sometimes people only write it down, they don't listen at all. Uh, but it is important that both that you do both. So make sure that you do it in a way that works for you, whether you pause at the beginning of each slide and write it down, or at the end, or you go back later. 
So this is the second slide again. Some psychologists believe that you should study only behavior that you can see, uh, that you can see, observe, or measure directly. So an example would be you can measure the uh, behavior of a person logging on and off of the internet for hours at a time. You know, you can go, okay, there's six hours here, and then three hour, hours later, there is another eight hours block of internet. That is observable. You can measure it directly. So some psychologists believe that that is the only information that you should be able to use, is information that you have measured particularly. But other psychologists, and this is in point two here, believe that our thoughts and feelings are also important, uh, even though that these are these processes aren't observable. So why did um, this individual, I guess we named this person Steve in the second part, but why did Steve log on um, over and over again? It's because, maybe, is it because he feels intimidated by others um, or by his schoolwork? Um, you know, you can't directly observe that, that that's why, but you can um, sometimes observe you know, imply that that is the reason. So uh, there are two kind of fields, schools of thought there. One thing that they do agree on for sure is that the study of behavior should be systematic uh, in terms of like a scientific method and it should be collaborative. So uh, psychologists often publish their work so that anyone can read it. There are psychology journals that have uh, many of these papers in them. Um, so it is generally collaborative, um, you know, people share everything and everyone agrees that it should be systematic, that the research should be sound. So the use of a systematic and collaborative method of asking and answering questions about why people think, act, and feel as they do reduces the chances of coming to false conclusions. Uh, and I think that's really shown very well in this next picture, and I believe you have it in your booklet. Uh, and you might have seen it before, is that if everyone is on their own, kind of blindfolded here, like this guy and this guy up top over here, and over here, everyone is doing their own thing. They all come to different conclusions, and the elephant is not very impressed at any of them because they're not, they're not right. Uh, if they were to take off their blindfolds and, and, or at least communicate with each other, they would be able to tell that that is an elephant. So uh, it's very important in psychology that is collaborative, um, to come to the right conclusions. So, uh, being a scientific field, um, psychologists make hypothesis all the time. They make an assumption or a prediction about behavior that is tested through scientific research. So that's a, probably a term that you're very familiar with. But um, psychologists make hypothesis about many different things all the time, and um, there's going to be a, a situation where we're going to study uh, different influential uh, experiments and all of these had a hypothesis and a point to try to find out if they were correct. Um, so science, psychologists have several goals and they seek to do generally four things and you'll notice these four things describe, explain, predict, and influence are our key points for the day. So we were gonna, we're gonna get into um, the key points here. So to describe, so one goal of psychology is to describe behavior. The first goal for any scientist or psychologist is to describe or gather information about the behavior being studied and to present what is known. Um, for example, we describe the behavior of the person who logs onto the internet for long periods of time. So we can say six hours here, eight hours here, uh, you know, we can describe it as long periods or short periods. Um, we can describe, you know, the time of day that this was happening and maybe like, you know, what the person was doing on the internet at those times. Um, so like, that is one goal, to gather as much information as we can and so we can describe the situation uh, so that anyone else that is coming into it can understand what is going on. You know, describe as much as possible, key point one. Key point two is to explain. They want to explain why these people are doing these things. So after you've collected all this data, um, can you you know come up with a explanation about why this is all happening? So they also seek to explain why people behave as they do. Psychologists propose these explanations as hypothesis. Uh, it is a researcher's prediction about what the results of a study are expected to be. 
and then you do more experiments to figure out if that hypothesis is correct. So essentially you have a hypothesis and um, you want to do an experiment to find out if that is correct. Now that only happens after you've observed something and you've described something, uh, you know, and you have some data, you, know, you have something to go off of from information already. Uh, it's hard to do something without any previous information or knowledge about it. So they seek to explain why people behave as they do. Uh, as research studies uh, designed to test a hypothesis are completed, more complex explanations called theories are constructed. Uh, these are usually based on large numbers of studies. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't come up with a theory on my own. I would come up with an explanation for my own uh, study. And then, you know, maybe someone would come up together with a whole bunch of these explanations and come up with a theory that explains all of these. So they usually are based on a large number of studies. An individual can do a large number of studies over their career, uh, but it's generally a lot of studies that is required to come up with a general theory. Uh, and theories always change as new data and new experiments improve our understanding of what's going on. So theories are fluid. Um, sometimes they are completely scrapped years after they were developed. You know, that wasn't completely correct. But sometimes theories last for uh, a very, very long time and are proven generally correct over time. They don't have experiments that contradict them. The third goal of psychology is to predict as a result of accumulated knowledge what humans will think, do, or feel in uh, various situations. So after you've come up with these theories, um, psychologists, a lot of them want to predict what's going to happen or what someone will do in a particular situation. And after you start predicting that, you can start to maybe experiment and test that. Uh, a lot of uh, experiments are based around predicting what humans will do, uh, think or feel in various situations and then testing that out. Uh, by studying accounts of past behaviors, psychology uh, psychologists can predict future behaviors. So they can take what they know and apply it to different situations and then test to see if it is correct. That would be make a hypothesis, make an experiment with a procedure, carry out that procedure, and then record the data and come up with an explanation. Find out if their hypothesis, hypothesis is correct or not. Uh, take just a second here to remind you that you should be pausing either at the end or at the beginning of these slides just to copy things down. Uh, it's important that you not only uh, write down what is on the slide, but that you also uh, listen to what I have to say. I believe that, you know, I add a fair amount to it. The fourth key point in the fourth goal is to influence. So some psychologists are conducting studies with a long-term long goal of finding out more about human or animal behavior. Um, so these people are doing basic research, you know, they're just trying to find out more about it. Uh, other psychologists are more interested in discovering ways to use what we know to benefit other people. So this would be influence behavior. They would, this would be called applied science. So there's going to be a key point section, or sorry, a uh, important term section, uh, and you're going to find out what basic science and applied science are in more detail. Um, but essentially, basic science is research just for research sake, and applied science is using it to influence behavior and to solve problems for people. Um, so, like sometimes, uh, some psychologists find that uh, kind of unethical to be influencing behaviors. They believe that it should only be finding out more about what people uh, do and explaining why they do it, not kind of trying to change what they do. Uh, and so at the end of each lesson, so that was all for notes. So uh, if you didn't have enough um, space, please, you know, write a little smaller or, uh, you know, you can get a piece of loose leaf and staple it in. Uh, but now uh, there's going to be at the end of every lesson a your job slide and it's going to have important terms on it. Sometimes there will be two, sometimes there will be four. I'll try not to have more than four generally. And there will be an assignment. Uh, for you to do as well. So in the booklet, there's a section for you to define these terms. Uh, if you have questions about what I'm looking for about them, please let me know and I can answer that in class 
over email, by Google Meet, whatever our situation is at the time, uh, and then complete the assignment. Uh, after all of these assignments are done at the end of the booklet, you're going to uh, hand everything in, the entire booklet, uh, and some of the assignments throughout here will be for Mark. So it's important that you complete them all, and if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. We'll be spreading this out over this unit out over um, you know several weeks, uh, and I believe there's six lessons in it um, overall. So if, if you have any questions about how this is set up or what you need to do, please let me know. Uh, but I appreciate um, you watching the entire video, and uh, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you soon.